Hey friend, Graham Cochran here. And one of the biggest questions I get as a business coach is really simple. Should I run my business as an LLC or as a sole proprietor? Maybe you've asked yourself that question. Maybe you're trying to figure out which entity makes sense to you from a tax perspective. Or maybe you're just thinking, I don't know what the heck either one of those are or why I should care. I'm just making money or trying to make money. Believe me, I've been there. And what I hope to do in today's video is explain what each one of those are and the differences and give you a simple and easy framework to understand which one is the right fit for you and your business. Two huge prefaces before we begin. Number one is I am not a licensed tax professional. I can only give general advice to you based off of my experience and what makes sense as a business coach. I don't know your specific details, so it might make sense to consult your CPA or your tax advisor if you have more detailed questions. And second, all of this content makes sense for you if you run your business in America. This is the country I live in and work in, and it's the tax code I understand. So I'm gonna be speaking specifically to the American tax code. Make sense? All right, let's jump in. Sole proprietor, LLC, what the heck are these things? In the plainest terms possible, a sole proprietor, is what you are by default when you start rendering a service or selling a product. Whether you know it or not, the moment you open up shop, as it were, and start making money, you are, at least in the IRS's eyes, a sole proprietor. There are no forms to fill out to become a sole proprietor. There are no hoops to jump through. It is just who you are by default. And that phrase, sole proprietor, means simply this. You are a one person business or a one owner business. Sole meaning only and proprietor meaning business owner or property owner. Easy peasy. So what does this mean for tax purposes? By law, if you make any money on the side with your side hustle, you know, I hate that word, you must report that income on your tax return. If you wanna be legal at least, and you should because it's the right thing to do. Now many people run small side businesses, whether it's cutting grass, cutting hair, designing websites, whatever, and they think they don't need to report that income if it's under a certain amount. No, if you make any money, report that income on your personal tax return. Now, the way the IRS views this income as side income is really simple. They tax that income, which is really your income minus your expenses. So they tax your profit, like any income you make, at your personal tax level. So your personal tax bracket, the same amount you're taxed on any paycheck you currently have. So you're taxed at your same personal tax bracket, plus something called self-employment tax, which is at this moment 15.3%. And this includes your FICA, the Social Security, Medicare, all that kind of stuff. So your personal tax bracket, whatever that percentage is for you on the federal level, and your extra 15.3% self-employment tax. Now, if you live in a state that charges state income tax, you'll have to pay that as well. Not all states do, but some do. So you'll wanna take a look at what that tax is for your state. And we'll talk about how to file your taxes as a sole proprietor in a minute. But in essence, that is what you are by default. You're making side income, whether it's $10 or $10,000, you need to report it and there's a place for you to do it and that is how you're taxed on it. Now an LLC stands for Limited Liability Company and it's exactly what it says. It is a company that you form that has limited liability for the owner. Basically, you're setting up a separate entity that runs the business, that does the business, that isn't you. You own that entity and you might work in that entity, but you are not it. It is separate from you, which comes in handy when things like lawsuits come about. It keeps a separation, a veil or a wall between what can be sued and what can happen over here and your personal life and your personal wealth and your personal assets and things like that. Now, the big difference between a sole proprietor and the LLC, besides having that separation, the big difference as it relates to you and your taxes is that an LLC has to file its own tax return because it is its own entity separate from you. So it has to file its own return 
And then the profits, which is all the income that business made minus its expenses, those profits are then passed through. It's a pass through entity passed through to you and you actually pay your taxes on those profits on your personal tax return at your personal tax rate. So what's the difference between that and how you're taxed on a sole proprietor? They sound almost the same at the end of the day. Let me explain the difference and which one is a better fit for you. So should you run your business as a sole proprietor or should you form an LLC? Which one is the best one? Here is the back of the envelope answer and then I'll unpack it. Easiest way to start and run your business is as a sole proprietor. And I would say forget even thinking about forming an LLC until you are making at least $50,000 or more in annual revenue. Here's why. When you're just starting out as a business, you're usually making little to no revenue, right? We all have to start somewhere. So the potential tax benefits of running your business through an LLC, more on those in a moment, don't outweigh the costs incurred by having an LLC. Things like having to file a separate tax return, possibly paying a CPA or an accountant to handle all of that and do your bookkeeping. As a sole proprietor, you can do everything that an LLC can do. You can set up a separate checking account for your business, which you should be doing from day one, by the way. You can do this at any bank of your choice. You can set up a DBA or a doing business as, where you can set up your bank account or accept checks or accept payment under your business name and not your personal name, even though you're still a sole proprietor. In the state of Florida, this is called a fictitious name and it's the exact same thing. And then filing your taxes at the end of the year is a breeze. Simply use something like TurboTax.com or H&R Block or whatever software you like, and most of them are online these days, to fill out your normal 1040 and follow the prompts when they ask if you've made any extra or side income or if you have a business. Answer the questions about your revenue, how much you made, your expenses, how much you spent, and it will calculate everything for you, how much you actually are taxed on and what that tax should be based off of how much your overall income level is and all of the deductions therein. All you have to do is keep good records of your income, and your expenses, including probably receipts. At least take a picture of them, save them to Dropbox or Evernote or wherever you like. That way, in case you get an audit, it's really easy to show what your expenses were, that they were valid expenses. So the question is, when does it make sense to form an LLC? Well, I personally started my first business, The Recording Revolution, as a sole proprietor, and I ran it that way for over three years. I had a fictitious name or a DBA, The Recording Revolution, was able to accept payment for years and years into my business checking account under that name, but I filed my taxes as a sole proprietor and it worked great. So why the switch? Two reasons. One. I was making a lot of money and I was afraid that my tax returns looked like a giant red flag for a potential audit. And two, I was curious to know what kind of tax savings I might realize if I formed an LLC. Ah, tax savings. Two of my favorite words in all the English language. Let's talk about the tax benefits of running your business through an LLC, how that all works, and when it makes sense to form one. The big difference with an LLC is that you no longer have one role. You now wear two hats legally. You are both owner of the LLC and an employee in or for the LLC. You own it and you work for it. That's right, if you set up an LLC, and specifically if you choose an S election to be an S corp, on the federal level, which I would recommend you do, the IRS views you as two people, and that's significant for this reason. With an LLC, this means you now must take a paycheck or a W-2 wage like any employee would, but you're also eligible to take the rest of your profits directly as what we call a distribution to shareholder, kind of like a bonus. And that makes sense because you are the only shareholder of your business, you own all the shares, and you are distributing profits to you, the only shareholder. Make sense? Now why does any of this matter and what's the benefit and the point of it all? Great question, pay attention. Whatever profit you take as a distribution to shareholder is not liable for that FICA 
or that Social Security and Medicare tax, meaning you can save that 15.3% of self-employment tax that you were paying as a sole proprietor. Now you still have to pay federal income tax or state income tax if that applies to you on all of your profits, but not the additional 15.3%. You must, however, pay that 15.3% FICA on any of your W-2 wages or your paycheck wages as an employee of your company. And you must, by law, take a reasonable salary. Yes, that is the language, reasonable salary for the work you're doing, meaning you can't be earning $10,000 a month and just pay yourself 100 bucks a month. Okay, let's just use a real example, real numbers, so you see where the potential tax savings are. Let's say you're a sole proprietor and you're making $70,000 in profit per year from your business. So let's say realistically you brought in $80,000 in revenue, but you had $10,000 of expenses that year. So your net taxable profit, according to the IRS, is just $70,000. So let's assume that you're filing jointly, you're married. At that income level, $70,000, at least in 2018, you would be in the 12% tax bracket, meaning you would owe $8,400 in federal tax. Now you gotta add to that the 15.3% self-employment tax and your total tax bill is $19,110, ignoring all other deductions and life circumstances. Now let's say you made the same amount of money, but as an LLC with an S-Corp election. Okay? You make the same $70,000 in profit, but this time you only pay yourself a salary of $35,000 and you take the remaining profit of $35,000 as a distribution to shareholder. So your W-2 wages or your paycheck would be taxed at your 12% federal income bracket plus the 15.3% for FICA, giving you a total of 27.3% or $9,555. While your remaining $35,000 of profit is only taxed at the federal rate of 12%, or 4,200, bringing your total tax outlay to 13,755. Now I'm ignoring state income tax for these examples. That brings you a tax savings of $5,355 just by earning the same amount of money as an LLC and not as a sole proprietor. Now, of course you have to still factor in the costs of having an LLC forming it in the first place and filing a separate tax return every year and potentially hiring a CPA if things get a little more complicated. But you can see that those tax savings far outweigh the costs and the hassle of setting up a separate entity like an LLC. So there you have it. That's the big reason why people form LLCs is generally because you can realize a tax savings. If you're making too little of money, it's worth trying to do the calculations or even having a consultation with a CPA or talking to your CPA if you have one and running the numbers to see what is that break even point where you're really not making any tax savings worth the effort for setting up an LLC, having a separate LLC and the cost of the LLC. But you can find that point where you know if you make more than this amount of money, you're gonna to start to realize a tax break and it would be worth it for you to switch. Like I said, generally, I wouldn't even think about forming an LLC unless you're making at least $50,000 a year, but that's just a rule of thumb. Now, if you're thinking about forming an LLC, but you're like, how do I do that? Where do I do that? Do I need an attorney for that? No, you don't. You can do a lot of this stuff online yourself. For example, there's a great company called LegalZoom where you can form an LLC right from the comfort of your home in your PJs, and they handle all of it for you for a nominal fee. It's very simple. You just answer the questions and they fill out all the forms for you and handle all the legal aspects of it. I formed LLCs this way before, it works great. I've also used LegalZoom for a bunch of other things like forming a will and setting up trademarks. So they're a great company with great customer service, so I can personally recommend them. But there's a lot of ways to set up an LLC and you don't need to use one of these companies to do it. I hope that's helpful to you. I wanna ask you a question, leave a comment. Let me know two things. One, if you have a business or you're about to start a business, are you a sole proprietor or are you an LLC? And why? Has it been a good fit for you where you're at? What other questions do you have about 
LLCs versus sole proprietors? Let's start a discussion below and I'll see if I can help answer your questions. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to these videos. I'll see you on another video real soon.